Hey, good morning, guys. Rules for Rebels here with episode 36 of Side Hustle Tuesdays. So today's story is a story of a woman side hustler who stumbled upon an interesting product at a farmer's market and decided to start a business around this product. And that's kind of interesting. You know, I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we're looking for the next groundbreaking idea. We think we have to turn the world on its head. And in reality, a lot of times uh, there's, you know, great ideas out there already in existence right in front of us. And all it really takes is putting a different twist on it or doing it better than the person who is already doing it. So this product that the woman discovers in today's story at the farmer's market, she realizes, you know, first she starts selling it at farmer's markets just like this woman. But eventually she realizes nobody's really selling this online. She winds up going online with it. And not only does she have a lot more success and sell a lot more units, um, but she also doesn't have to you know, spend her weekend sitting at a farmer's market all day long, physically selling every product to every customer. So uh, like I said, I think sometimes entrepreneurs overlook the, the great ideas that are right in front of us. Uh, for example, today's story involves glass nail files. Now, most online sellers would probably say nail files are saturated. Nail files have been around forever. What makes it interesting? What makes this a product that you should, should sell? Um, what makes you think that you can break into this competitive niche or industry that's been around together forever? Well, with today's story, it was something as simple as the material that the nail file was made out of, as well as how the side hustler in today's story went about marketing it. So today's story is about a woman who earned over $7,000 within her first week of her side hustle and who wound up going online and turning this into a six-figure business. Today's story is about Colleen Roberts from San Diego who found her side hustle at a local farmer's market. So Colleen is a serial side hustler. She's always had ideas. She's always tried to bounce from one idea to the next. She's had a food delivery service. She's sold on eBay. She's sold on Amazon. At one point, she even helped a NASCAR driver uh, roll out his own line of merchandise. And one day in San Diego, she was walking around a local farmer's market and she saw an interesting product. The product was a glass nail file. Now, I don't know much about nail files, but apparently most nail files are made from either cardboard, uh, which isn't very durable and isn't very hygienic, or they're made from metal, which I, I guess is pretty rough on your hands. However, glass seems to be a great medium to make nail files out of. It's hygienic uh, like metal, but it's easier on your hands like cardboard. And also I think visually glass is a little bit more appealing and also kind of seems cleaner, which from a marketing perspective could be good. Now, oddly enough, I was just asking my uh, my girlfriend about these, if she'd ever used one, and she actually said she'd, she'd used them on a couple of occasions, and she actually said she wasn't a big fan of them. So I guess maybe not everybody likes them. Um, I know my audience is mainly male, but I know we have a, a few female viewers. So, uh, you know, any of you female viewers who are watching this, if you have any opinion on these, let me know. I'm curious to hear if people actually like them. Uh, anyhow, initially, Colleen thought about buying them from the woman at the farmer's market, However, her prices were too high to allow for Colleen to source them from her. Even buying in bulk, the prices were still too high. So Colleen went online, started searching for glass manufacturers, and she eventually found one in Ireland. The price was good, they looked nice. However, the glass contained lead, and she didn't want to sell a product used on your body that contained lead, which obviously we know is harmful to your body. So she continued searching, and she eventually found another vendor in the Czech Republic who made lead-free glass. Now her initial order was for five different colors and three different sizes, and she wound up ordering 50 of each, so that it came to a total of 750 nail files, and it cost her just over $1,800. I think that comes down to, I don't know, $2.30 per unit, $2.50 per unit. One thing I'm a little bit confused about, I mean, it's possible she just overpaid, maybe she was paying for higher quality, but I was curious about these, right? So I went on AliExpress, DHgate, Alibaba, and decided to search for these nail files. And even on AliExpress not buying in bulk, I was seeing like a pack of five for, you know, $2.50. I was seeing singles being sold for a dollar and a quarter. I was seeing packs of five selling for like a dollar seventy-five. So it looks like these things are dirt cheap. Now I'm not, you know, maybe hers are better quality. Maybe the ones on AliExpress contain lead in the glass. I'm not really sure, but one of the first things that struck me after Googling these was like, wow, she's paying a, a good buck for these. And I looked at hers on the website. I mean, well, they look nice enough. You know, I, I'm not sure why she's paying that much as opposed to sourcing them from AliExpress. I'm guessing maybe either the, the ones on AliExpress contain lead or they're of a lesser quality. But anyhow, she wound up going to uh, Home Depot. She bought uh, some, you know, terracotta pots um bought a table a tent you know all the stuff to set up at a farmer's market and what she did was kind of clever she wound up arranging the nail files 
like they were growing out of a pot on a table. So, you know, she took this pot, filled it with rocks and stuck her nail files in there. So it looked like the nail files were growing out of the, growing out of the pot. And I thought that was kind of a clever way of marketing. And, and actually it's kind of funny the past couple weekends, I've been going to a farmer's market near me. I, you know, the train station is just a couple blocks from me. They have a big farmer's market on Saturdays and Sundays, and you have people selling like crafts, um, like stone bolt, stoneware, stone bowls, and things like that. There's a guy who makes fresh donuts or someone who makes croissant breakfast sandwiches. And I like walking around there, just kind of viewing the different stuff. And there's a lot of kind of like artsy type stuff. And it's kind of interesting to see how some people just like throw their stuff out on the table and other people, uh, kind of arrange it in interesting ways. And I, I think Colleen was pretty smart about how she arranged it. She found kind of a, a cute way to arrange it. When people are walking through a farmer's market, you have to do something to grab people's attention or make them look over at you. So I thought that her, her kind of marketing or, or how she displayed her products was kind of clever. But uh, one problem she had early on was she had trouble keeping change on hand. People were always paying in cash, obviously, because it's a farmer's market. And, you know, she needed hundreds of dollars to, to be able, and, and small bills, you know, fives and singles, uh, to be able to make change for everybody. So what she decided to do to make her life easier was to offer a bundle. So we talked about how she ordered three sizes, right? Small, medium, and large in a variety of colors. So rather than selling single nail files for a couple bucks, she wound up selling a three pack for $20. Most people walking around are gonna be carrying a 20 with them or maybe two tens or four fives, whatever it be. It made it very easy. She didn't have to make change as much and it solved one of her problems. Just so, you know, as you're getting into side hustles, you're gonna run into like stupid little problems like this. And, and I thought this was a pretty clever way of dealing with the problem of, of having to have all this change. Okay, I'll sell a three pack for 20 bucks. I don't have to make change and I sell three units at once instead of one. So anyhow, it made it, made it easier for her and her customers. And whereas she normally sold them for 10 bucks a piece, the customers felt like they were getting one for free. Um, so she needed to make $1,800 to recoup her initial investment, but that first week she wound up making $7,000 after she counted up all her money. Uh, she wanted to continue to keep costs down, so she did uh, craft fairs and trade shows. Uh, the first fair, she had to pay for the booth rental up front. Uh, later, you know, after she kind of started developing relationships and a rapport with some of these vendors, she was able to just pay a deposit up front to keep her booth. And then she could pay the full fee after the event. And so basically she's not having to come out her own pocket with money. She's using the proceeds from sales that weekend or that week to pay for her booth. And as she grew to, to know even more people and make more connections, you know, within that kind of craft fair farmer's market world, uh, they actually let her pay after the event with no upfront fee. So she could show up at a, a craft fair um, or a farmer's market, not pay a penny out of her own pocket. And then after the week's over and she's done with her sales, she can use that money to pay. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, after that first purchase of 1,800 units, um, her sales have been paying for the new stock ever since. Um, what's kind of nice about this product, I know a lot of times a question I get is like, oh yeah, I, I don't have room in my house to store all these products. And I think Pete, like when I was selling hoverboards, like yes, they took up my entire office. I literally had to walk through a maze because you know the boxes were three feet by one foot by one foot and weighed 22 pounds a piece. With smaller products, I mean, me and my business partner can stock thousands of units on a shelf, you know, in the back of our office. So one of the nice things about this is the product is small. Um, so there's no storage costs. You know, she can literally fit thousands of units like under a bed in a spare bedroom. Um, and kind of a, a neat or interesting thing about this story, Colleen wound up meeting her future husband, who was a web designer and made her a website. Uh, she got into Real Simple Magazine as a featured beauty product, and that just sent sales through the roof. Uh, she liked going online as she was kind of getting burnt out with the trade shows. You know, it, it's fun doing trade shows. As somebody who used to buy storage units, you know, I used to do a lot of garage sales and community sales and flea markets and things like that. And while it's fun and, and kind of a novelty at first, at some point, you know, spending day in and day out sitting around in a lawn chair, um, at trade shows or farmers markets or flea markets on the weekend can get old quick. So uh, she was getting kind of burnt out going online meant she didn't have to go hit up the flea markets or the, the uh, farmers markets every weekend. And uh, one kind of smart thing that she'd been doing is collecting people's emails all along. And I don't want to say doing it under the, under the guise because that sounds kind of like, uh, I don't know, creepy or coercive, but she offers a lifetime warranty with her products. So like most lifetime warranties, you buy a new microphone, you buy a new whatever else, there's oftentimes a warranty card that you fill out, right? So in order to qualify for her warranty or sign up for the warranty, you submitted your email. Well, not only are you signed up for the warranty, but now she's collected your email for marketing purposes. So she began doing some email marketing to harness that, power, that potential. 
and uh, it wound up eventually becoming a six-figure hustle. She slowly by slowly phased out the you know in-person shows and farmers markets entirely and has gone to all website sales. So by doing this, she's got a lot more free time um, and that free time has given her the opportunity to start a new side hustle. She's enjoying a little bit more leisure time and the flexibility of being able to move on to other things while still having this successful business going already. So uh, one thing about side hustles, as we always say, they should be fun, they should be cash flow positive, and uh, you know, ideally, if, if it's a hobby of yours or something you enjoy doing anyways, and you can make money off of it, even better. Um, a good side hustle is in a category of its own and can add to your financial well-being. So that's definitely all true of Colleen's side hustle. Um, you know, she's, she was already a serial side hustler, so she enjoys this type of stuff. She has fun doing it. Um, and, she, you know, she obviously went to farmer's markets, so she got to hang out at farmer's markets and sell her wares. When that became kind of overwhelming or got old, she was, you know, smart enough to go online with it with the help of her uh, future husband who happened to be a web designer. And uh, not only did that increase sales, but it also gave her some free time to, to move on to some other side hustles she'd been wanting to try as well. And all along, this was cash flow positive. Um, we talked about how she made her money back after the first weekend. And even as she continued doing farmer's markets, because she developed a rapport with a lot of the people who ran them, she could actually go to the farmer's markets for free and pay later, which means she was basically just using her profits to buy her way into those farmer's markets. So I thought this was a pretty cool side hustle story. Um, Throughout this uh, this episode, I've showed you Colleen's website, and I also have been browsing a little bit through Alibaba and AliExpress just to show you some of these cheaper nail files. I mean, if any of you guys um, know anything about nail files or that industry or whatever else and want to chime in with um, why her nail files cost more than some of the others, uh, I'd be curious to know that. But I really like the side hustle. This one seemed a lot more attainable or um, I don't want to say easier to do, but it just seemed... Uh, you know, some, some of these side hustles seem a bit more intimidating, like, oh, I don't know if I have enough money to start that, or I don't really have that skill set that you need to do that. But, you know, when this story, Colleen was literally walking through a farmer's market. She didn't have some light bulb go off that, like, she invented a new product. She saw somebody selling something, said, wow, that looks interesting. There's not really anybody else selling it. Maybe I'll give it a try. And it wound up turning into a six-figure business. So that's one of those awesome things about side hustles. But anyhow, guys, drop a comment in the comment section below. would love to hear what you thought about this story, this product, etc. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I will catch you guys on Thursday for Side Hustle Thursdays.